said that he, Godfather, and Ty Nitty were about to shoot a video for a song we did for a European compilation album. Twin said that the company gave him $5,000 cash for me to appear in the video, and he had the cash on him. Kiki and I bounced to Queensbridge, where the video was being shot in front of Havoc's old building. I parked a bulletproof Suburban on 21st Street and then walked over to meet everybody. On the block, I saw friendly faces that I hadn't seen in years. Yo, what up, Thad? My man Bumpy greeted me. The last time I saw Bump was when he had Worm on the back of his BMX bike and Worm shot his gun in the air trying to scare me. <laughs> Bumpy got locked up after that and did like six years. I shot my scenes real quick because Kiki was waiting for me in the truck. She's not very sociable with people and doesn't trust anybody, so she fell back. While Twin, Bumpy, and Godfather walked with me back to my car, we saw Green Eyes walking towards us on 21st Street. I hadn't seen him since I stopped dealing with bars and hooks. Yo, P, I need to speak with you real fast. What up, man? He said. We stepped aside. What's the word, man? I asked. Look, the nigga Prem is upset with you because you've been talking about him on your songs, Green Eyes said. He has some niggas out here looking for you. I already told niggas that they got to fall back because you my nigga, P. But just stop talking about all that shit in your songs. While Green Eyes was talking, Bumpy and Twin walked over. You good, Dan? You good, P? Bumpy asked. What up with this nigga right here? Yeah, it's all good, I said. We good. Aight. Just let me know, cause anybody front on you, done, niggas gonna get fucked up out here. Then Twin said, Yo, you good, P? You sure? Yeah, we just talking, chill, I said. Then they backed up. Green Eyes then said, Yo, you my nigga, P. You know I love you, man. Preem just feel like it's none of your business. So just leave all that shit alone, man. I'm out here, man. I'll see you later on. I gave him a pound and then he left. Green Eyes was referring to my song, Rotten Apple, on Return of the Mac, where I got a line saying, If Pac was still alive, we'd be on the same team. We got bigger fish to fry than that bitch Supreme. I was referring to Tupac's relationship with E Money Bags and Majesty and how that would have eventually made us friends. I called Prima a bitch. Because he had E Money Bags killed and got 50 shot up. So fuck Preem, simply put. You send niggas, I send them back in plastic. You send bitches, I send bitches back pregnant. Simply put. Godfather told me one day that some Supreme Team niggas was walking around the projects asking about me. Saying they were going to kill me. But I didn't know what he was talking about and didn't care. Now, Green Eyes confirmed it. Oh, well, see me when you see me, nigga. Twin gave me my $5,000, and Kiki and I left. My relationship with Kiki was getting a little better. After I caught those cheating messages on the phone, I became real cold-hearted. The G-Unit deal only made me worse. She probably thought I was cheating a lot. But 99% of the time, I was just working on music and kicking it with my boys. I'd rather chase money. I spent long hours in the studio and came home around 5 a.m. every day ever since Kiki and I was first together. It was a rare occasion for me to take a break, and a vacation was out of the question. Vacation? What's that? Working so hard, I was missing out on time with my kids and my woman. I used to bring my son Shaka with me to the studio and the office back when he was three years old, until 2002, when I started smoking and bullshitting again. I didn't want him around all that. Scientific hit me back and told me Voxonic offered to give me a 50-50 deal with a $400,000 advance and ownership of my masters. Vox also offered an ownership percentage of the company as well. 
and an executive position at the label with a $5,000 per month salary and fully paid living expenses, which is worth an additional $5,000 per month. I told 50 about it, and he said, Yo, how the hell do you be making all these crazy deals? That's amazing. Take it. Looking over a rough contract, Mob Deep's new lawyer, Evan Freifeld, had the same response as 50. He couldn't believe it. Evan wanted to make minor adjustments to the deal terms before I signed the contract, so he told me he'd contact me when it was ready to be finalized. After my call with Evan, I drove to the studio to see what was up with Hav. On the drive to Queens, I got an email that surprised me. It was Lindsay Lohan. She asked if I was in New York and said that I should come to a club in Manhattan later that night called Bungalow 8, where she'd be hanging out with a few of her girlfriends. So I hit her back and told her I'd meet her there. I had $20 in my pocket and zero in my personal account. I called my accountant, Artie Irk, and asked him to transfer $500 into my ATM account so I could have spending cash for the club. Mob Deep kept all our real money in a business account, so we couldn't touch it. So when we wanted money, we'd make transfers through our account. It kept us from spending too much. Havoc wasn't at the studio, but our engineer Fly was there with Nice. I told Nice about Lindsay's invitation and asked him to come along. When 11 p.m. rolled around, we hopped in my bulletproof Suburban and stopped at the gas station to get gas plus some bread from the ATM. But when I checked my account, I still had zero. Sometimes the money transfers don't go through until the next day. Damn. I put 10 bucks in the bulletproof, enough to get there and back. Now I only had 10 bucks, and Nice had 20. Wow. We're going to an exclusive Manhattan club with 30 bucks. To hang out with some million dollar white chicks. Oh well. At least we looking good. There were two black bouncers at the door. Who I figured might recognize me. What's up man? It's Prodigy. I said. The bouncer looked at me like I was retarded. Are you on the guest list? He asked. It's a private party. I should be. Check it out. Prodigy from Marv D. Nah. I don't see you, the bouncer said after glancing at the list. Sorry. Yo, prodigy, son. Mob deep. It's just two of us. I hated feeling like I had to beg or prove that I belong in the club. Sorry, I can't let you in, he said, looking at me as if he couldn't care less. I'm here with Lindsay Lohan, I said. She's waiting for me. Who? Lindsay Lohan, I repeated. Can you please tell Lindsay that Prodigy's at the door? Thank you. The look on his face was priceless. Lindsay walked nice of me through the packed club to her VIP table, where she had bottles of Grey Goose and Belvedere. Bungalow 8 looked like some tropical jungle type of shit inside, a predominantly white crowd sprinkled with blacks and Latinos. I've been there before with Alchemist. Lindsay's friends were wearing Mardi Gras looking white masks, drunk and dancing crazily to rap music. Lindsay introduced me to her assistant. We poured drinks and started dancing while Nice danced with one of the mysterious masked ladies. Another masked lady got behind Nice and had him in a sandwich. He looked over at me with the crazy Kool-Aid smile. After a handful of songs... Nice and I walked over to the bar, so it wouldn't seem like we were drinking all of Lindsay's liquor. Prodigy? A young black bartender looked at me and asked. Oh, shit! My favorite rapper! Yo, I love Mob Deep, man. What can I get for you? Two shots of Hennessy on ice, I told him, since we were on a tight budget. Man, I'm hooking you up with a bottle, man, on the house. The bartender hooked us up. I thanked him for the bottle. He saved us from looking stupid and walked back to the VIP. On the way, 
I bumped into RZA from Wu-Tang Clan. We were surprised to see each other. Then I got back to Lindsay. The ladies poured shots of Hennessy and Knight started dancing with the same masked female. She lifted her mask real quick to get some air and I saw it was Ashley Simpson, Jessica Simpson's younger sister. I told Knight so he would know that he had a celeb on his hands. Then Lindsay pulled me back to her. I saw her looking at her Blackberry at the well and her mood changed. I asked her what was wrong and she said, This guy I used to mess with is fucking stalking me. I think he's in the club. Oh yeah? Well, let me know if you see him and we'll fuck him up. I said, You good with me. I ain't letting nobody bother you if you don't want to be bothered. Just let me know. After another hour of drinking, dancing, and grinding on each other, we said our goodbyes. I don't know if Nice got Ashley's number, but regardless, we had fun that night. October 26, 2006. It was Alchemist's birthday, and twin, godfather, Ty Nitty, my cousin JM, JM's homeboy Rome, Alchemist and I, gathered at Al's Manhattan apartment to celebrate with a case of Heineken's, a case of Coronas, and a lot of Kush. Twin was pushing to go out, but Alchemist and I wanted to stay in the apartment and make music. Atlanta rapper Ludacris was having an album release party for his new singer, Sharifa, at the show nightclub near Times Square. Come on, yo! It's Alchemist's birthday, Twin said. Let's go out. We rolled out three cars deep, Alchemist and me in my bulletproof Suburban, JM and Rome in JM's gold drop-top SL Benz, and Twin, Godfather, and Ty Nitty in a black Hummer H2. I usually snuck a two two or a twenty-five caliber handgun into the clubs if there were only a few of us, but there were seven of us. So I left the pistol in the truck in the storage box between the driver and the passenger seats. Velvet rope surrounded the club's front entrance. A black doorman came over. Yeah, what's up, man? Prodigy and Alchemist plus five, I announced. The doorman said to give him a minute. Then he walked inside the club. While waiting, I looked toward the street to my left and saw three plainclothes detectives from the hip hop task force. I recognized them for the night they arrested me after the blood money release party at the Roxy. I didn't see the black cops. It was the white ones who looked like military dickheads. I wanted to point them out to Alchemist and Twin so they remember their faces. Yo, don't look right now. But over to the left, you're going to see three white dudes by a black car. I said, that's the hip hop cops. The doorman came back with a young white woman who had a clipboard in her hand. What's up, guys? She said. We're working on clearing VIP tables for you now. How many is it? Seven? I got three tables and there's a one bottle minimum per table. So you have to buy three bottles, okay? How much are the bottles? Alchemist asked. And what if we don't want to drink? You have to buy a bottle in order to get a table. It costs four hundred dollars a piece, the lady said. Twelve hundred dollars, Alchemist and I said in unison. To get into a party? Al and I looked at each other. I'm ready to bounce. Twelve hundred dollars. They're trying to play us. The lady came back after a few minutes with another offer. It's really overcrowded in there, and we only have room for you guys in the VIP section, she said. So I can let you in. But you had to buy at least two bottles. That's only 800. Come on, I know you guys got that. Man, fuck this lame ass party, Al said. Let's go. We jumped in our rides and rolled out with my suburban leading the pack. Jams Benz behind me and the black Hummer behind them. A few blocks away, I got a call on my cell from JM. Yo, the D's just pulled me over, he said. Word? You clean, right? I asked. Yeah, yeah, we good, he said. Ain't nothing in here. Okay, well, 